Let's take a look at the efficiency of sort algorithms. The big question that Eric Schmidt asked President Obama in 2008, what is the most efficient way to sort a million 32-bit integers? And the president, the senator, he was a senator at the time, answered, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. If you want to see the interview for yourself, you can check out the YouTube video. Well, he was right. And in this presentation, we want to see why he was right. Efficiency, as we know, refers to how much time and memory an algorithm consumes for a given amount of input. And in the case of sorting, it would be a question like, how long will it take to sort a million numbers? And how much memory will it consume? We want to analyze the algorithm itself, as we saw when we were analyzing the search algorithms, not its implementation in a particular computer. And how do we do that? We abstract away the details. We boil the algorithm down to its essential features. So let's take a look at this. First, let's start with bubble sort. Here's the implementation of bubble sort, an app inventor. But let's ignore those details and boil it down to just the question of, well, how many comparisons does bubble sort need to sort a list? And we'll look at this pseudocode version of the algorithm. So we're going to repeat n minus 1 times the following loop. We're going to repeat going from left to right across the whole list of numbers, comparing adjacent cards or numbers. If they're out of order, we're going to swap them. The comparison comes into the statement where you are comparing adjacent card. So let's take a step-by-step -step look through a simple case where we have the five cards and they're in the wrong order, the exact opposite order, which happens to be the worst case for the bubble sort. First, we compare the king and the seven. They're out of order, so we swap them. Then we compare the king and the four. They're out of order, so we swap them. Then the king and the three, out of order, we swap them king and the two, out of order, so we swap them. So after one pass, the king has bubbled up to the top, and we made four comparisons. Second pass, compare the seven and the four, out of order, swap them. Compare the seven and the three, out of order, swap them. Seven and two, out of order, swap them. And after the second pass, two items have been sorted, and it took us seven comparisons, three on this pass. Third pass, the four will bubble up. So it goes up to its proper place, so that's two more comparisons. Fourth pass, the three will bubble up. And so after four passes, you've sorted the five items, and it took a total of ten comparisons. So in this worst-case example for bubble sort, where the cards are in exactly the wrong order, it took us four passes to sort five items. What if we had n items? Well, I think you can see that would take n minus one passes. And what about comparisons then? So for n equals 5, we saw that on the first pass, we needed four comparisons. That's n minus 1. On the second pass, we needed 3, which is n minus 2. And then we needed 2, which is n minus 3. And when we got down to the last pass, we needed one comparison. And that'll always be the case, because you'll only be left with two cards at that point. So we did a total of 10 comparisons over the four passes, which is an average of 2.5, which happens to be n over 2. So in general, to sort n cards or n numbers, we have to make n minus 1 passes, and we need to make n over 2 comparisons per pass. And that gives us this formula for the number of comparisons, n minus 1 times n over 2. So if we multiply out this expression, we get the formula n squared over 2 minus n over 2. And if we graph it, we get this curve. It's a quadratic curve. So this graph captures the overall, the essential behavior of the bubble sort. But we can simplify things even further. Remember, we're ignoring a lot of details here. We're counting comparisons, but for example, we're not accounting for the amount of time it takes to swap two cards. This is part of what we mean by abstraction. Because of that, some of these terms in here may really not be very accurate. This expression really is an approximation of the behavior of the bubble sort algorithm in the general case for n inputs. Therefore, what computer scientists do typically is they knock off this n over 2 term because notice it doesn't really change the shape of the curve. And similarly, we can knock off the divide by 2 term, and we're left with this simple quadratic expression, n squared, which captures 
the way that the bubble sort will grow in the time it needs, the time it takes, to sort n numbers as n grows larger and larger. So this is the sort of analysis that computer scientists do to conclude that bubble sort is an n-squared algorithm. As n grows large, its efficiency, its running time, will grow proportional to a quadratic, an n-squared curve. Okay, what about merge sort? Well, here's its implementation. And again, we want to simplify this. We want to abstract away the details and look at the essentials of the algorithm. In merge sort, remember, we divide the cards into n piles containing one card each, and then we merge the piles into new piles that are twice as big by comparing cards until there's just one pile containing all n cards. So just as we did with bubble sort, let's ask the question, how many comparisons are required to do a merge sort in the worst case? Merge sort's a little bit like binary search, but in reverse. Instead of dividing a pile of n cards in half numerous times until you get down to one card, we're going to be merging cards, starting with piles of one, and going to two, and then four, and then eight. So how many times can you do that? Well, it's the same answer as how many times you can divide a pile of n cards in half until you get one. It's the log of n. Uh, but on each, each time you double the size of the cards, you're merging. And merging requires a, a lot of comparisons in the worst case. For example, to merge two piles, one with 1, 3, 5, and the other with 2, 4, 6, to get the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, requires five comparisons. You have to compare 1 and 2, and then 2 and 3, and then 3 and 4, and so on. To merge six cards in the worst case requires five comparisons. So to summarize, to go from piles of one card each to a single pile of n cards in order, we have to do log n merges, but on each merge we have to do n minus 1 comparisons. And that leads to this expression here, n minus 1 times log n overall. And if you multiply that out, you get n log n minus log n. And again, just as we did with bubble sort, we want to look at the abstract version of this expression. And so this is the graph for n log n minus log n, but notice what happens when we just cross off the log n term. It doesn't change the shape of the graph at all. It shifts it over a little bit to the left. But overall, it characterizes the behavior of the merge sort the running time of a merge sort grows proportional to an n log n curve. And this may seem like a pretty steep curve, but look at the comparison with the n squared curve, the bubble sort. So it's quite a lot less steep than the bubble sort. So we can conclude that merge sort is a lot more efficient than bubble sort. Finally, let's look at bucket sort. Here's the details. But again, we want to abstract them away and look at just the essentials of the algorithm. So remember, in bucket sort, we go through the deck, placing each card into one of m buckets. In our case, we used 13 buckets based on the rank of the cards. And then once they're in the buckets, you go through each of the buckets, pulling out the n cards in order. So basically, you've gone through each card in the deck twice once to put it in the buckets, once to take it out. So if there's n cards in the deck, you've made two n operations. In this case, remember, we can't count comparisons because we're not really comparing one card to another. We're simply taking the card and putting it in a bucket. So we say that bucket sort is, in the worst case, two n operations. And now we can compare these three curves together and look at the difference. The linear curve, the bucket sort, grows more slowly than n log n. That, that's quite a significant difference. We're just looking at it for small values of n, relatively small values of n. But as n gets large, the difference in these three curves is going to be very big. To see the difference between these three curves more clearly, let's look at this table, which shows the value of n squared, n log n, and 2n for ver different values of n. And, and you can see that President Obama was right. When you try to sort a million numbers, 
Bubble sort will take one times e to the 12th operations, approximately. Well, that's a trillion operations. Even if you could do a million operations per second, that would be a million seconds. Merge sort also takes a lot of operations, but many, many fewer than uh, bubble sort. So uh, it may be feasible on a very fast computer to use merge sort to sort a million items. And bucket sort is the most efficient, taking only a couple of million operations to sort a million numbers. So to sum up our analysis of sort al algorithms, what we've seen is that as the input size grows, as the number of items to be sorted grows, the running time of bubble sort would grow proportional to an n squared curve, merge sort would grow proportional to an n log n curve, and bucket sort would grow proportional to a 2n curve. But there are some caveats. Bucket sort actually uses more memory because it needs buckets to store the items being sorted, and merge sort also uses more memory. But the bottom line is, in choosing a sorting algorithm, you definitely would avoid bubble sort if you have a lot of numbers to sort. You would probably go with an n log n sort. There are many other examples than the merge sort we looked at here, but that's the class of sorting algorithms that are used most often.